In the wake of their World War II victory, United States citizens scoffed at the idea of any other country, even their Cold War adversary, the Soviet Union, surpassing their technological and military superiority. However, they were in for a shock. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first satellite in history, Sputnik, into space. In response, United States media bleated with panic, rekindling Red Scare fears. How on earth could the technology of such a backwards, oh and let's not forget, communist nation beat us? Could, could a communist system be better than ours? Despite President Eisenhower's attempts to downplay the situation, his words fell flat. Slowly, the administration realized that mere words were useless. To regain its credibility, the U.S. had to answer in kind, and loudly. According to Walter McDougall's 1985 article, Sputnik, the Space Race, and the Cold War, the National Security Council advised the administration to pursue projects, quote, which, ha while having scientific or military value, are designed to achieve a favorable worldwide psychological impact. The U.S. had to compete in the space race. This race was itself propaganda, designed to reaffirm American superiority in the technological, military, and ideological fields to both the nation's citizens and to the rest of the world. Cold War victory depended largely on success in outer space. After JFK's inauguration in January 1961, the space race began in earnest. Americans eagerly followed the training of seven handsome, charismatic men for Project Mercury, the nation's first manned spaceflight program. The U.S. was finally about to be on the scoreboard, but the USSR remained one step ahead. In April of that year, Soviet Yuri Gagarin became the first man in space. The U.S. and Al astronaut Alan Shepard were only three weeks behind, but the psychological damage was done. As Congressman Overton Brooks lamented, we don't want to find the ham hammer and sickle flag standing up on one of the peaks of the moon. We want it to be the star-spangled banner. Kennedy understood propagandistic prestige better than his predecessor, Eisenhower. As Captain John Shaw observed in the March 1999 issue of the Air and Space Power Journal, the space race provided a measuring stick with which the world could judge the two principal superpowers. To the public, achievements in space equated to technological and military power. In May 1961, JFK called for the nation to commit itself to putting a man on the moon. No single space project will be more impressive to mankind. The reaction was swift. The NASA budget increased eightfold in the next five years. Astronauts were cast as heroes defending liberty and battling communism in space. With an intensifying connection between the space program and the Cold War, the government placed higher pressure on NASA to take more risks. After a CIA report of spotting a gigantic Russian rocket, which they feared was a lunar vessel, NASA scrambled to modify a mission originally for placing a rocket in Earth orbit to instead blast it to the moon. On July 20, 1969, Neil Armstrong stepped from the lunar module Eagle onto the moon's surface, and America rejoiced. While the space race continued for years afterward, no triumph came close to the marble of the first moon landing. However, this achievement likely never would have occurred without the one-upmanship of the Cold War and the necessity for bolstering America's image. Just how successful was the propagandistic aspect of the space race? The propagandistic qualities of the U.S. space program in large part achieved their goals. With the sensationalism of the moon landing, the U.S. and capitalism reacquired the faith of the American people and third world countries. The historical influence is felt to this day. How many Americans, if asked, would named Alan Shepard or John Glenn, not Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space? Sally Ride, not Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman? How about which country landed spacecraft on the moon first? Hint, it wasn't us. However, the prevailing idea, even today, is that, hey, if America landed on the moon, we can do anything. On the other end of the spectrum, the USSR, after struggling for years, eventually sputtered and died, losing the Cold War. A war of ideology, propaganda, arms buildup, and not least, prestige. The last one due, in large part, to space power. It seems likely that if the U.S. hadn't chosen to engage in the space race, the tide may have turned in the Soviets' favor. The space race was propaganda, but it helped galvanize an entire nation into accomplishing one of the most incredible events in history.